we see a floating green stone with bandages, the poem Epitaph of Twilight by Emma Wieland, yet to return the Shadowed One, who quests for the Twilight Dragon, rumbles the dark hearth, and Helba, Queen of the Dark, has raised finally her army. Epirion, King of Light, beckons. At the base of the rainbow they meet, against the abominable way together they fight. Alba's lake boils, light's great tree doth fall. Power, all now to droplets turned into the temple of Arcolian, returns to nothing, this world of shadowless ones, never to return, the shadowed one, who quests for the twilight dragon. We transition to the start of Kite's journey with the boot up screen and a character name entry. After we have our name, we see our desktop with a letter from our school friend Yasuhiko, telling us to meet him in the world and to look for his character named Orca. We meet Orca by the main gate, who proclaims his high status in the world. He gives us a brief explanation of how the game works, with member addresses, mail, party members, accessing fields through gates, combat, and even treasure. While exploring the dungeon, we see a girl being chased by a large creature, wielding a red staff. But when we go to confront the issue, we are met with an empty room. After retrieving the treasure from the dungeon, we attempt to leave but are transported to a strange field, and we are face to face with the girl who was being chased. Orca approaches the girl, which she hands over a very powerful and dangerous book. Suddenly, the large creature arrives, and Orca tries to attack it to allow Kite to escape. But while his attacks seem useless, the creature is able to subdue Orca and destroy his character. The book leaves Orca and ascends upwards. The creature attempts to do the same to Kite as it did to Orca, but a mysterious staff penetrates the ground, allowing Kite to depart safely. We see the book descend onto an unconscious kite in an area with destroyed buildings, while a mysterious woman looks over. We return with Kite, thinking to himself about what just happened, how he hasn't been able to get in contact with his friend, only to find out that his friend has been hospitalized and comatose. We get mail from the CC Corporation that the world has been having issues, and that they will be allowing access to only certain servers until they can find the cause of the problem. While trying to log in, we are greeted with a message telling us that they are doing maintenance and cannot log in. We post a message on the board to see if anyone will respond about what had happened. Afterwards, we get mail from an unknown user with all of the words jumbled up. This message is from Aura, and it reads, Please, to the one who holds the book, Scathe is looking for me. There is no time. Please help me. We are finally able to re-log back into the world and are greeted with a pink-haired girl running around aimlessly. She confronts us for staring at her. While examining the gate, the pink-haired girl confronts us again and informs us that she has some interesting keywords, but we aren't allowed to go unless we invite her into our party. We arrive at what appears to be a cathedral. Once inside, we are attacked by a goblin. The girl, Black Rose, seems inexperienced in combat and is surprised by how well we are able to defend ourselves. There is a statue of a girl covered with chains and an inscription, Scathe, Enos, Magus, but the rest is faded. Black Rose was about to tell us that she was looking for something when suddenly a winged knight appears and shouts for me and Black Rose to escape before it is too late. A monster appears out of a portal, similar to the large creature with the red staff. The knight appears to vanquish the monster, but it is able to get back up and has a cluster of glowing virus armor on it, which now gives the monster infinite health. Black Rose seems to be familiar with this virus armor. She runs at the monster, attempting to fight it in a rage. Kite thinks back on how Orca was attacked by the virus, and a voice calls out to you to use the book. Doing so causes Kite's data to be rewritten, and a glowing bracelet has been bestowed upon him that allows him to remove the virus armor from the monster. Balmung defeats the monster, and then angrily realizes that he was saved from someone who shares the power as the virus. Balmung threatens Kite for what the virus has done to the world, and for any of those who spread it. 
Black Rose comes to Kite's aid, telling Balmung to have some respect for Kite, since he has just saved his life. Balmung leaves displeased. Outside, the mysterious woman Helba, the hacker, talks to Balmung and tells him that Kite is a friend of Balmung's partner, Orca. Going back to check the board, our post regarding Yasuhiko has been deleted. Going to our mailbox, we get a message from Helba, telling us about Data Drain, a move that lets us rewrite a monster's data. Using it will be very valuable, but will also cause a lethal virus to spread onto ourselves. Also that we are being watched, which is the fate for the one who bears the bracelet. Logging into the game, we overhear some players talking about a cat player. Making our way to the player's location, we are approached by the cat player, called Mia, who is able to see and sense our bracelet. She is accompanied by a wave master named Elk, who is not aware of what bracelet both Mia and Kite are discussing about. Checking the boards, we see a post regarding an event character, a little girl with long hair. Once we log in, we investigate the area, which has been infected by the virus and shows corruption. A player who also saw the post tells us that an operator informed them to turn back before they themselves log out. Entering the dungeon, an administrator informs us that the world is corrupted and to log out. We take his warning lightly, since turning back now would not aid our journey to save Yasuhiko. Going into the deeper part of the dungeon, we encounter a virus monster, and with the aid of the data drain and Black Rose, we are able to defeat the monster. After the fight, a wave master named Mistral was on looking the fight and was astonished by our data rewrite ability. She too saw the board post and came to investigate. She notices after the server shut down that the world has been acting a little too odd. She gives us her member address before logging out due to overcooking her food in the real world. Logging back to the main server, we are spoken to by a heavy axeman named Piros who speaks in the matter of someone who roleplays. He asks us to accompany him in a dungeon and bear witness to him slaying a wicked monster that has been harassing players. Once we reach Piros, we see him struggle to fight the monster, so we lend a hand in defeating it. Doing so, Piros gives us the treasure and his member address as thanks. Returning to our mailbox, we get an anonymous warning telling us to stop inquiring about the server problems if we intend to continue playing the game. Additionally, we get a letter telling us that we won a power-up campaign contest. We log back in and go to the nearest NPC who gives us our prize, the Book of Law. However, we are presented with an installation failure screen and that it tried to overwrite our character data. Going back to our mailbox, we get a message from Mia telling us to go alone to an area if we want to know more about our bracelet. Once we arrive at the corrupted location, we receive messages from Mia telling us that she will wait for us in the deepest part of the dungeon. Entering the dungeon, we see another system admin informing us to leave the corrupted area, which again, we ignore this warning. As we progress, we receive messages from Mia. She's acting very cryptic with messages like, do you think the area is really corrupted? For something to be born, something must break. The same applies to humans. Do you understand? As well as, you came to find the secret of the bracelet, but do you trust me? The world isn't only ones and zeros. It allows the existence of areas between yes and no. Humans are interesting, aren't they? Reaching the boss room, we fight the virus monster so we can demonstrate the power of the bracelet to Mia. After defeating the monster, she tells us that she has never seen it before. Almost expecting her to have the answers we seek, we are upset that she isn't as informed as it appeared she was. Mia wanted to see if we were capable of the power bestowed upon us, so she could be confident in teaching us how to hack the gates. Data draining monsters gives us virus cores, which allows us to hack gates. Previously on the boards, we had read a message about a protected area. We invite Mia and Elk into our party, and she teaches us to hack the gate. Once in the corrupted area, Mia questions that there must be some secrets in the area, because why else would it be protected? Reaching the boss room, Mia tells you to defeat the monster. 
After all, there must be a reason why you have the bracelet. You data drain the virus monster and defeat it. After the fight, you explain what happened and how you acquired the bracelet. However, Mia is uninterested in what happened and wants nothing more than to know what you will do going forward with the power. Mia logs out, and Elk seems almost left out. Saddened, Elk too logs out. Logging back in, you come face to face with Balmung again. He questions your connection with Orca, which you confirm that he is your friend who invited you to play the game. This time, you are able to explain your story and how Orca has been hospitalized due to the data drain of the mysterious monster. Helba shows up and warns Kite of someone known as Leos, who is on the side of the system, who treats whoever wields the bracelet as a virus. As quickly as she arrived, she quickly leaves with no sign as to whose side she is on or what her motives are. Checking the boards, you see that others who attempted to visit the protected area were not able to enter. However, after unlocking it, others are now able to visit it. You see a post about a weapon known as Spiral Edge. A player named Natsume is asking for help to get it. You go to the location and retrieve the Spiral Edge, and you decide to give it to Natsume. In thanks, she gives you her member address. Going back to the boards, you see another post regarding a strange girl with white hair. You receive mail again from someone appearing to be Aura, the white-haired girl. Her message reads, I want to be born, to live, that is all I want. Mother, Morgana, bearer of the bracelet, help me before there are any more casualties. Additionally, you receive mail from Black Rose, who also gives you the area that was also listed on the boards. You are now able to access the higher level server Theta. There, Black Rose waits for you near the gate. You and Black Rose make it to the corrupted area. However, exploring the dungeon only leads to a dead end with no sign of Aura. Elsewhere, you see Elk and Mia having a conversation. Elk is becoming jealous of Kite, and so Elk decides to proclaim his affection for Mia. Later, we make our way back to the Delta Surfer, with Elk waiting by the gate for us. Elk asks for our assistance with an area. His favorite spot has been having trouble with the data virus. Upon reaching Elk's favorite area, you don't seem to see any sort of virus. Elk deceives us into coming so he could ask for the bracelet that has all of Mia's attention. Suddenly, a sign of a data virus appears in the zone. Kite and Elk make their way into the dungeon to see if there is a virus. Entering the dungeon, it is clear a virus is present. Making our way into the deep dungeon, we come across Mia. Kite, Elk, and Mia work together to stop the virus monster. After defeating the monster, Mia admits she was looking for Elk, and that when he is not around, she misses him. Elk is happy to hear Mia confess to him, but is also saddened that their favorite area is now ruined by the virus. Mia comforts Elk, letting them know that they will find another favorite place. Checking the boards, you see another player asking for assistance in acquiring a weapon. This player's name is Sanjudo. You make your way through the dungeon, grab the item, and give it to him, and as thanks, he gives you his member address. Logging back into the main server, you come across Mia and Pyros having a conversation. Mia hands an item to Pyros. The item causes Pyros to turn orange. Mia then tells Pyros that if he wants the cure, he will have to go into the dungeon and find it. Inquiring what item Pyros was after, he proclaims it was a magic love potion. Making our way into the dungeon, we come across True Remedy, which turns Pyros pink, First Remedy, which turns Pyros yellow, Custom Remedy, which turns Pyros normal for just a second before turning him back to orange. Finally, we find Remedy, that turns Pyros back to his true self. As thanks, he gives you his diary. At first I didn't realize that the item gave you negative stats, so I had to replay this part again so I could store the item. Looking at the boards, it seems like a player by the name of Gardenia has a fan club, with some pretty serious fans. We investigate the area, and are pressured into going through the dungeon to find Miss Gardenia and give her a letter from the fans. We see Miss Gardenia, but she brushes us off, knowing we are only there because of her fan club. She then returns to the dungeon, and we follow shortly after. Again, we see Miss Gardenia, and again, she brushes us off, and goes deeper into the dungeon. Again, we see Miss Gardenia, and again, she brushes us off, and goes deeper into the dungeon. We later see Miss Gardenia fighting the boss, and we give her some assistance fighting it. She recognizes our strength, and is impressed. She tells us that she will accept the letter under one condition, if we accept her member address, and come to her aid if called. She then uses a sprite ocarina to escape the dungeon without walking back to the entrance where her fans await for her. 
Her fan club makes their way to the boss room, only to barely miss Miss Gardenia. Going back to our mail, we see a message from Black Rose, telling us she did some investigating and found a new dungeon to scope out. We log back in to see Black Rose waiting for us so we can team up and attempt to get into the area, but the area is locked and we don't have the appropriate data cores to enter. The original message containing the area has been modified, so it appears we'll need to find someone who might know what the area was if we're going to go in. At a loss, we check our mail and have a message from Mistral, who is wondering where we have been. So we tell her that we have been on the Theta server, and that she can come by so we can play together. Logging into the Theta server, we see someone trying to scam Mistral. She logs out before being scammed, and the player, feeling duped and ashamed of his failed scam, gives us the item. Mistral comes back, telling us that she had heard of an area and wants to go explore it together. We explore the area, but it appears to also have the virus corruption. We make it to the boss room, use Data Drain, and defeat the monster. Mistral shows interest in our bracelet, and we explain the situation to her on how we got it. But before we could explain that it wasn't any sort of event, she logs out because she needed to bring in her clothes from outside, since it started raining. Miss Gardenia sends us a mail, requesting our presence, since our agreement was that we'd come whenever she called. We join Gardenia, but it seems like all she wanted to do was gift us the treasure at the end of the dungeon. Black Rose sends us mail, asking how our search is going about the restricted area, and we inform her that we have a data core, so we should be able to access the area now. We meet back up at the Theta server, and we hack the gate to get access to the protected area. We enter this very creepy dungeon, and make our way down to the deep dungeon. However, instead of a boss monster or a virus monster, we are instead placed into a big white room with a single bed and a plethora of teddy bears sprawled all over. A voice begins to speak. And so, I shall name her Aura. Without you, she would not exist. The shining girl, Aura. We will entrust her with our will. Our future is in her hands, and she is our. We are also gifted Harold's Notes. The girl in the notes has to be the one that gave us the bracelet. Black Rose finds more of the notes, saying, Shunning the field broken by wave, the shadowed girl whispers, Surely I will return. Alas, the truth unbeknownst, awaiting her at journey's end eternal mourning for her land, and the item Epitaph 00 given to us. After the journey, Kite and Black Rose part ways, and will inform if either one comes up with any clues. Reading the boards for any clues, a thread about a missing player piques the interest of me and Black Rose. Someone tried to visit an area, but it was protected. Going back to the board, it seems that there is someone who posts, asking for Orca. The poster mentions that he'll be waiting in the area that Orca took us on our first day, Going back to that area, we see a player named Bob, and tell him all that has happened. He can't believe what has happened, and is even familiar with the rumor in the game, the same rumor that Orca mentions when he first met Aura. Bob mentions another player who may have more information on this rumor. The player's name is Linda. This is our new clue that we should investigate to try and figure out what the rumor entails. Before logging out, Bob gives us a power-up that Orca was meaning to give us on our first day. We enter the area. Linda tells us that the online game seems to have something lurking in it, and that there is some other purpose. Linda tells us that Orca and Balmung were working together to find the truth, and that they are the most powerful party members of the group Descendants of Fianna, Balmung of the Azure Sky, and Orca of the Azure Sea. Linda warns us and asks that we forget all about the rumor, for it may bring more pain. We tell her that we cannot give up, for we are friends with Orca. That alone gives her enough assurance to give us the location for us to venture. We make our way to the area that Linda provided, and it appears that the gate is protected. So we hack it and gain access, and gather answers. Going through the dungeon, we are yet again put into another white room. However, this one seems a bit more destroyed, with chunks of the room missing, and a single rocking chair with part of it missing. We return to our mailbox, with a message from Black Rose. She was able to contact someone on the board with a location. Black Rose waits for us by the gate to investigate the area. Going into the deepest part of the dungeon, we see the girl we are supposed to meet up with. She is talking with the system admin. The system admin logs out shortly after our arrival. Black Rose asks the player for the area their friend disappeared to. Sounding almost defeated, she tells us to forget about it. She posted the keywords on the board, but it seems to be too dangerous. She apologizes and logs out. We quickly head to the board to find the keywords, but the post has already been deleted. While reading through Bob's post about Orca, other players mention how Orca has impacted them with his kindness. Some even telling about Orca and Balmung's feats during the limited time event, the One Sin. 
We returned to our mail to see Black Rose was also unable to read the post before its deletion. Additionally, in the news section, it appears two high school students were also comatose. One was able to regain consciousness, but the other still has yet to recover. This is a reference to the anime DVD included with the Die Hack Infection game, Die Hack Liminality. Helba's message informs us of the deleted post that the player Meg made and gives us the location and that the post mentions a girl and a guy with the red wand playing tag. Aura's scrambled message reads, Apology, I can't run anymore. If Scathe catches me, there's still time. 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 We log back into the world, headstrong to go to the area and confront the creature that started this fight. But we are stopped by Black Rose, who wants to know where we intend to go without her. Unsure if we possess the power to stop it, Black Rose assures us that we can and that she will go alongside us. Nothing we say or do will stop her from joining. We hack the gate and make our way to the restricted area. Upon entering the area, the bracelet begins to glow. We make it to the boss room, where we see Aura. She tells us that it is too late. At that moment, Scathe shows up and data drains Aura, and what seems like scattering her data. The fight begins with Phase 1 Scathe, the terror of death. During the fight, he uses the staff as a weapon, slashing the player twice, with a small buffer in between hits to make a quick recovery. It moves around the field, attacking the ground, causing up-close earthquakes. It casts judgment on all players, freezing them, and then shattering. Occasionally, it will data drain a teammate, resulting in a ton of debuffs. When Scathe is weak enough, it can be data drained, resulting it in being reduced to a stack of glowing rocks. Similar to that of the opening cutscene, once in its lesser form, it will continue to attack using Earthquake. Once defeated, it will melt into a liquid and cause a massive tremor, sprouting blue roots from the ground. A rock hits us on our head. We look up to see a giant creature in the sky. Is this the next form of Scathe? Helba appears and looks onwards while the creature launches a devastating roar launching us far away, and even Helba seems to struggle holding a barrier to this creature. Helba safely logs you out, as she turns towards the creature and calls it by its name, Kubia. We had come so far, but we knew so little, and now the true battle was about to begin. Now this is the ending for the Dot .hack infection story. However, there is a secret boss that you can fight after the story's over. Bandai sends you a mail to fight this mystical giant on an air fleet. We make our way to the protected area thanks to Bandai giving us the necessary data core to hack the gate. The boss has a unique room unlike all the other dungeons before. This monster is known as the Parasite Dragon and it is strong. It has a flame attack that hits all party members in a cone, nearly killing all members, and definitely killing any class without enough defense or health to withstand it. It has a magic tolerance, giving it an immunity to magic-based attacks. Also, it has a crazy amount of HP, being 9,999. Once weakened enough, you can use Data Drain on this monster and get a rare dual blade weapon which is considered to be one of the best weapons for Kite in this first part of the game. After defeating it, Kite mentions how the creature turned the airship into a living creature. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you very much for watching this. I had a lot of fun playing Dot .hack, I haven't played this in a very long time, and it means a lot to know that you also have interest in this game. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and tell me if you want me to continue doing this series. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.